That's a little skew. Yeah. Hey, good. Good. hey, Heather. All right. You gonna join us up here or are you gonna just chill? Chill. All right. Who said hi? Jen. Jen, all right. Jen Baker said hi, great. All right, so we're gonna start over again. Obviously, I didn't have it turned on. Day 1193. Are we really gonna repeat? Okay. Yeah, we gotta repeat. April 12th, 2024. And uh, a little short prayer. Heavenly Father, please watch over the January Sixers and all their families and make their journey through this saga as light as it can be and keep their sense of humor and their enthusiasm up as you clearly have done we've seen it and we we look forward to continuing that and in jesus name amen i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you Day 1192, or it could be 93. See you, Matt. Let us know. There you go. Yeah. So do you remember what the, it's the issue of whether you count the first arrest or if you count the day of January 6th, I think, isn't it? It's. I think that's the difference. So I thought bit. it was the, the day of the first arrest to the time. So, like, while we're here, it'll switch the day because it was the first arrest. The first arrest on January 6th, I right? Or the next day? Last week was 1,185. Well, if anybody's got greater detail on that, put it in the text and we'll get it shouted out. All right, so looks like we're live streaming just fine. You guys have anything you want to start with? Um, I've got a couple of things to talk about. Just a couple more things. You want to go ahead? So Taylor Janatakis is now has now left the Gulag, and he's in Philadelphia. We don't know if that's a tr tr transitional place uh, where he's going to be going and moving on further. But right now he's with a bunch of people um, that are there from the, from the Gulag. So Reed Christensen, Brandon Fellows, Taylor, uh, Mac Maccabee, Jeffrey Sable, Douglas Wyatt, and Doug Wyatt. They're all there, um, so uh, hopefully they're having a reunion. <laughs> and also tonight, they're supposed to be, uh, uh, Scott Miller's gonna be calling in with a reveal, a gender reveal, so we'll uh, see what that is. Everybody can place their bets, boy, girl. I say girl. Girl. Boy or girl? Um. Boy. 50-50 chance. You're just trying to be different. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's supposed to be some fun way that he's going to reveal it. He, he's just finding out today himself. Can I, can I follow up? Yeah. So I want to just share a little story. I, I, I'm in the small oyster business, as you all know, and do sometimes uh, provide oysters for folks for events and things. And I was emailed from someone that I didn't know I uh, was interested if I had oysters available for a gender reveal party. And I thought, well, gosh, that's not the kind of thing I really want to go to, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized, I, someone told me later it's a thing, so, uh, oh. anyway, yeah. It's huh. Yeah, um, that, that's funny because 10 years ago, I wouldn't have batted an eye about it, you know? <laughs> now, it is a thing. Heather, you know anything about David Geetson? He's supposed to be sentenced today. So David Geetson's sentence was today at 12.30. I told him last time I was gonna to try to make it, but it was just no way today. So um, we'll find out for sure. What else you got? Uh, well, I'm not trying to put it all on you. I could. Scott Miller's sentencing is next week. They won't, they won't hear it. Yeah. Scott Miller's sentencing is next week, April 19th. Chris Quaglin is having a hearing also on April 19th. Um, and then a Andrew Taki is going to have his sentencing on April 24th. Um, so, uh, and Zach Alam is April 19th, if all, if all that really is going on.
couple things I want to get out there for folks, and I'm going to repeat them over the night here. Um, we've got a few folks that are asking for help, people that we know that have, uh, have been through the D.C. jail, some of them and others. So Barry Ramey is one who put out a request for help uh, over a month ago, probably two months ago. Um, and um, I don't have Barry's gifts and go handy right here, but um, yes. then recently, Cheryl will find it for me. And then, but recently they've also are supporting someone who is in the same jail as Barry in, in uh, Florida. His name is Julio Vaquero. Um, he's a J6er. He has recently been diagnosed with stage four gastric cancer. Um, Barry and, and his fiance are trying to help him out as best they can. He's a father of three. His family started a Give, Send, Go in his name and would like help with medical bills. And the Give, Send, Go is um, forward slash help dot Julio. In fact, I've got a picture of, of his Give, Send, Go coverage here. So you can go to Give, Send, Go, you know, put these guys' name in. There's always a little write-up, a little bit about it, so I'm going to read that. But that's Julio in the middle. Um, and his family, photos of his family there. So clearly they're big into, into baseball and stuff like that. Um, pretty neat. But he needs some help. I want to read what's on the Give, Send, Go. Just, uh, I put together this fund to help my J6, J6 or dad fight stage four cancer. He's been incarcerated since August of 2023 for his presence at the Capitol January 6th. He was nonviolent and much can't read this is blurred out uh, has walked around as a tourist this month we in April 2024 we found out he's diagnosed um, with the cancer and family needs help with this situation that is financially devastating we're exploring the medical costs and we'll update here once we have a clear vision in the meantime our family needs assistance with home expenses and daily living we appreciate any help every dollar counts no matter how small God is good and we are keeping my dad in our prayers and we ask if you can do anything at all is pray for him. Thank you so much. God bless. That was his son, Julio III, um, who put that together. So he's the campaign creator. So that's his son. You, you'll see in the pictures there. So thank you, Julio III, for helping your dad out. Uh, Barry Ramey is the other one. And I had one more to talk about. Mitchell Todd Gardner, I don't have his either, Andy, but um, maybe I can find it. I believe the message I got was that he's gonna be getting out in August, and I think he's concerned that he's not gonna have enough seed money to carry him through. Uh, I think the message was most of, a lot of his family that had supported him, some of them have died since he's been in jail. He doesn't want to be a burden on them. He just wants any help he can get to get some seed money together to carry him through a few months that, that he isn't going to just become you know destitute as soon as he gets out of jail. I, 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 I think his message was, if you can't give, 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 share, 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 and that shit. <laughs> yeah. And that's, right. that's, that's what he wants to, to do is, um, and I think, He's only looking to get achieve two months worth of living expenses, which is more than one person can give, but at five bucks a pop, I'll bet you several people could help him out there if we just get the word out to enough people. And for Barry Ramey, just go to Give Send Go, type in Barry Ramey, and you'll see uh, the information on how to send him some money. So Mitchell Todd Gardner's um, Gives and Go is Gives and Go forward slash Free Gardner, G A R D N E R, correct? All right. I might try to get all that stuff together today. It might even be in my pile here, but. That was, that's what I was working on. I just worked on it. 
So what what was the right of that? So rituals is causes. Just just in general, or slash free gardener. What's berries? Um, this and go berry rain day six, promissory and legal fees. That long? Are you serious? <laughs> Where is it? Can you just type in that? Give some go berry rain. I, that's all. I'm sorry. I'm not following you. I just want to get the right words out. That's what you said. I can't read that. I'm sorry. It's just give some go berry rain J6, commissary, and legal fees. That's the part I'm trying to understand. Do I have to put all that in or not? No, just type in Gibbs and Go Berry Rain. I was going to say, if you go to Gibbs and Go and type in their name, it usually comes up. Yeah. There's always one that you find that doesn't. But... Right. Um, yeah. sidetracked there. The new issue of the Sentinel is out. I tell everybody, check it out, even if you're not from around here. You can find it at www.nnsentinel.com. Um, really, really great articles this week, this month as well, as usual. John couldn't make it here tonight. He's uh, been running around delivering these things. Not only is the editor, publisher, uh, copy everything he also delivers them so here's you john thanks and i've got your copies oh, all right well let's do a little more here so i got a uh, notice through john haynes from captain america and uh this is the notice of American Lollapalooza, the 2024 Trump Boat Parade, first of many in 2024, Saturday, 4, 4th of May, um, Sunday, May 5th, if, if it rains, it's at the National Harbor at 11 a.m. And the fine print, he says, start warming up your boat, make sure you have good clean gas, make sure you have extra gas so on and so on but uh captain america i met captain america at cpac and uh have you guys seen him yet anywhere on social media or anything no no he literally wears the outfit and has the shield um and i i, I think he was at j6 i don't think he went inside but yeah he uh he's out there at a lot of these events you know with his with his outfit on uh helping to save the world you know That's an interesting approach. Yes, I like it. Yeah, it's it's personifying the heroes, if nothing else, reminds us that there can actually be some. Yeah. That perhaps they are we. It's interesting you say that. I'm going to give you the words that I gave at our board meeting yesterday evening. And... Um, I, I was thinking of that same thing. I was thinking about how do we get things done and what's the best way to do it. And so I'm gonna read this hopefully at some other boards and, and maybe get it into the letters of the editor, I think. Probably could use a little work, but here it is. Thank you, Chairman, members of the board, county administrator, and all other public servants and staff of the county for the opportunity to speak before you today. There is a growing sentiment in our nation that the higher levels of government for we the people have failed us. We see deadlock in Washington and Richmond from ineffective representatives who have lost the ability to reach across the aisle or even see past their own bias and ideology. Reasons include apathy, keeping a low profile, a focus on re-election instead of governing, or simply putting personal interests before God and country. Some representatives are compromised by special interest lobbies and crony capitalism. 
Campaign contributions often bear more weight than resolving issues in favor of citizens. Regulatory capture is a clear and present danger. The agencies we trust to safeguard our rights are often controlled instead by the very industries they are charged to regulate. The three-letter agencies have become political sledgehammers wielded against citizens instead of being the protectors of our rights, laws, and freedoms. But there is hope and encouragement to be found, and lots of it. You are the direct and first line of defense for ensuring that citizens' concerns are heard. Our voices flow through you in public comment, on the record, and by working with our local representatives who live and work alongside us every day. If some will ask, what really can be done locally to challenge massive public-private corporations or failed regulations and legislation adopted at the state or federal level? The answer is, actually, quite a lot. That is because as our local representatives, you and the ten th tens of thousands of you across the country have your finger on the pulse of the nation. You know it better than any other political office or position in higher government. We the people thank you for your service and your dedication. Your efforts will only become more important and impactful going forward. In fact, we're counting on you. That is because more and more citizens are becoming aware of how the rights to the pursuit of happiness as outlined in the Declaration of Independence have been usurped. Your efforts can be an inspiration and an example for local government across this great nation. Thank you for your service. Proud to know you, man. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Look, you're a perfect example. You two are a perfect example of this. You guys have gotten so active in the county and, and you've gotten to know these people down there and they impress me every time I go to one of those meetings. Maurice, every time I go to one of those meetings, which isn't often enough, but they are a great example. Northumberland County Board of Supervisors and, and some of the other boards are really great examples of just people getting involved in their local government. Absolutely. Um, I tip my hat to the Board of Supervisors. Um, case in point, you know, was it last week we had that meeting or the week before about the, the meters? They set, that, they set that meeting up specifically to hear the public. You, you don't see that in other places. But at the people's request, that happened. They researched it. I know that part for a fact. They already had a bunch of questions to ask. We got them to ask our questions. They engaged with the public. That's exactly what your, your little speech addresses. Right. Awesome. Right. Yeah. So, you know, on, on the one hand, they might say, okay, what's he going to ask for next? But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing, guys. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? Um, but no, I really, I really made it from the bottom of my heart, and I want to say this: these words, you know, or, or something like them, to the other other boards for the other counties around us, and if nothing else, to encourage them. John and I were talking about this on the way over here, that they don't really even know maybe necessarily how important their jobs are to the fight that we're in of taking back control of our country. Yeah, that's that's. That's actually a really good point because um, like so many others, they go about their day-to-day -day life, living their day-to-day -day life, um, and truth creeps in between the cracks now and again. But it, in general, the depth and breadth of the battlefronts um, eludes them. And the only thing that's actually going forward and making it go forward is the fact that they're all Americans. And this is how we do things in America. Yeah, and and uh, but the one glimmer that you've heard before of hope, um, Jimmy Brand brought it up again yesterday um, when they were working through their agenda, talking about, you know, what's our strategic plan for the county? Not not the comprehensive plan which is being worked on, but what's our strategy for the county? And he again brought that up, and you know, I think they agreed they're going to go and find the time to meet separately about it to, to try to work through that. So that was pretty pretty fascinating to watch that too. I happen to know that the Planning Commission and the EDC are on that task. <laughs> <laughs> and they meet next week if anybody's interested in going. Yeah, people get out to your local boards of supervisors. They meet once a month. There's usually opportunity for public comment. Um, 
go in there and just thank them for the job they're doing. You know, get used to standing up there saying hello to let them get to know you. And, you know, I think it's just a really great way to watch what's happening around us. I mean, most of us spend our whole lives not really understanding how things get done at a local level. And we just assume they're doing a great job and, you know, somebody else is going to take care of all that. So just get get out there. Yeah, that's actually a really great point. <clears throat> there are just under 3,300 counties in this country. And most people vote, as we learned from our guest last week, most people vote and then they walk away from it. They don't really do anything to make sure who they voted for does the job. They don't do anything to push them, hold them to the fire, um, or give them kudos for doing a good job. They don't engage. Um, the reality is, is if you can find four hours a month to show up at board meetings, just watch. It doesn't matter how boring the, the agenda is. They're not all boring, trust me. Um, but learn and understand the system. Get to know your elected officials, whether you voted for them or not. Learn who and what they are. And then when the day comes, that a topic comes up in your community, that needs to be addressed, with any luck, there'll be other people sitting in the audience and you can get together with them and work with them on that. There's, the elected officials can't ignore the public. That's law in every place in this country. They cannot ignore you, they have to receive you. And so if you do the research and do good research, don't do confirmation bias research, please. But if you do good research, and you provide your elected officials at the local level good information, you will have better outcomes without a lot of fanfare. Sometimes maybe a little bit, but spend the time, commit to it. Don't give up, keep doing it. Go to the websites of your, your representatives. It changes all the time. Just spend your morning drinking coffee doing that part. Download and keep all of the files that are public records. God only knows that a lot of local government websites are less than atrocious and finding things is like going out for a needle in a haystack. Put up websites and talk about what you find on your website. Just saying, there's a lot that can be done. The people have more power than they know. They just need to try and figure it out. Just that journey alone will shine all kinds of light. Agreed. Yeah. Everybody in the world just saw you point and I had to hand it to you. <laughs> <laughs> My slave. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we want to get in here real quick? Um, don't forget, folks, the Supreme Court hearing Fisher v. United States is Tuesday, April 16th at 10 a.m., I believe. 10 a.m. Um, for a minute. But that is uh, the hearing on the 1512C case, which is, sounds like the, there's a very high likelihood it might get thrown out because that was a bad statute to be used to begin with. But I've also seen many of the judges talking about they're going to go back and stack sentences instead of have concurrent sentences so they can still get the same freaking result. How about that for, thank you, the Department of Justice. Whether it's good news or not, they won't be able to do that without it being very visible. And while you're trying to answer the phone, Trump's um, immunity case in front of the Supreme Court starts April 25. and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using Global Tell Link. Hello. Hello. What's going on, Patriots? How are you today? We're doing good. Chris, how are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. You know, living, living the high life and uh, um, uh, 
No. So what? Um, uh, sorry, I was uh, just bring uh, bring my tray over because he knows I'm doing this. And uh, hey, surprise, surprise, the DC meal screwed up my diet again. <laughs> Because they don't know what they're doing, and they don't understand. They don't. I, I'm telling you right now. I break my diet, even when they say I'm not. Because I, 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 my stomach is so screwed up for the past three years of being in jail that I don't even know what feeling right is anymore. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like I am. I am messed up constantly. And um, people who have friends or whatever who have celiac disease know what I'm talking about. Um, I have I have a very very severe case of celiac disease. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, um, like when I was 12, I'm 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 a, I'm a shorter guy, I'm like five foot six, -ish, five six and seven. I was one of the tallest people in my in my class when you know, I was 12, 13 years old. I was this my I quit growing. Um, I grew, I went from growing eight and a half inches one year um, to growing an eighth of an inch over three years. Like, <laughs> what's going on? And um, I, I was taking in 6,000 calories plus um, because my, my sister, who's 10 years older than me, um, was counted my calories one time. And she said she quit counting at 6,500. Um, and that was an everyday occurrence. So I wasn't growing. I was 120 pounds soaking wet, 5 foot 6, 130 pounds soaking wet, you know, at 5 foot 6. And they said something's wrong. All of a sudden, my, my aunt got diagnosed with celiac. Um, and then, you know, they, they did an endoscopy on me. And, you know, after the first picture, uh, Dr. Cornier, uh, who's uh, one of the leading uh, endoscopy uh, or um, gastro whatever doctors um, in New Jersey for children, um, after the first picture, she's like, "Well, you has got celiac, but let's just poke around a little bit more and you know take some more pictures and whatever." And uh, sure, sure enough, um, I've been since then. I've been. Is it just they get different staff in there, or somebody forgets? I mean, what? They get, yeah, they get different staff. Um, the staff here is a lot of a lot of people uh, are African immigrants. Um, you know, uh, DC jail has this deal with African and, uh, African. Who listen? These guys are hardworking people, right? Don't get don't don't. I'm, I'm not you know. I'm not pointing the finger and saying, oh, it's, you know, it's because of these, these, these African immigrants. They're great people. But the problem is that they, a lot of them don't understand English, and they don't understand that. Or you have 
people from BC who don't have a good, you know, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, and education, and you know, um, they just don't understand. They don't understand food allergies. Mm -hmm. If I had the equivalent to a peanut allergy, and even though like my my mom had cancer and stuff, and, and you know, um, uh, had half of her inside just taken out. She just got done going through chemo over this stuff. And that was because she ate the wrong foods for, you know, 30 years. Um, and they turned into cancer and, you know, just spread. And, you know, they won't even tell me that she's, they say she's doing okay, but she wouldn't tell me if she wasn't anyway. You know, um, I got enough, uh, enough crap on my plate, you know, that they just, they wouldn't tell me. Right. Um, <clears throat> So, but she had secret surgery, um, you know, and I'm going through all that stuff. But well, anyway, um, it's just, I'm, I'm almost to the point of doing just a full blown out hunger strike again and, and just saying, screw it. I mean, first thing, I'm back up to 195, so, which is bigger than what I want it to be. I, I want to be about 185. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I got my knee injury and my shoulder injury before that, and um, then I broke my finger and everything else. And I was unable to work out. And, you know, if you can't work out here, then you just blow up. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, so, you know, now, and, and I mean, that's just laziness, too, because, I mean, this place, this place kills your morale. But, um, you know, I'm starting to work out, but again, I'm I can't, I can't do stairs, you know. I, I would love to, would, would love to go run, you know, three, four hundred stairs a day, or, you know, uh, every couple days. You know what I mean? I'd love to do that. I can't, physically cannot do it. My knee will not, I'm barely doing, I'm down to air squats right now, using the wall, and I'm, I'm, I can barely do 25 air squats. Beforehead, I used to do one-legged pistol squats on the stairs um, in perfect form without using any sort of handrail. One-legged pistol squats, and I would do I would do 12 to 13 per leg, um, which is pretty impressive if people understand what a pistol squat is. It's a one-legged air squat. Um, try it. Yeah. No. Can't do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, I just, I can't, I can't do them. So, and, and again, the, the marshals are denying my medical. Uh, so I've been told. Uh, and then the D.C. jail isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing. The D.C. jail is just like Northern Act. Um, they're getting paid to do something that they won't do. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, and it's because of people like y'all that allow us to have a voice and express it. And thank you so much. I've been saying your praises uh, about about what uh, Tom. I know we briefly talked about it about um, y'all getting the, um, the 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 grievances and stuff in, in order. Right. And, uh, Northern Mac NBC, and then also the, the, uh, the notes digitized. Um, thank you so much for, for, for doing that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so helpless in here, and it, it, it just sucks. You know, because like I would have had this thing done, and, and unfortunately, John Gross really got the ball with this. He was supposed to have it done a year ago, and you know, he just was like, oh, well, you know, you haven't even started. John, you don't. Why? You don't even know. Like, why isn't it done? And then he tells me, and then I, like, it's like, hey, I need it now, you know. And um, especially with what's going on with this with this lawyer. So, yeah. Um, Tom, I think that I, you are you going to be there um, on Thursday or no? Uh, Thursday. What's Thursday? I thought it was Friday. I think it's Thursday. I. I thought it was Friday. Friday, Friday the nineteenth. I don't know. You guys know more than me. What are we you talking about? Well, his hearing. His, his, his hearing. His hearing is on know. April nineteenth. That's a th that's a Friday. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, April nineteenth, Friday. Yeah. Um. So then Friday. Uh, 
That's right. I'm sorry. I'm talking to my lawyer today. And she said she's flying out Thursday. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, At 2 so, p.m. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to basically drop this stuff on the on the judge's desk, and I'm going to say you can't. You we need to we need to you know you need to postpone this thing because we need to get this thing digitized. Um, uh, Tom, if you're okay, uh, we might throw you up, up on the stand, you know, or you might just have to, not, not on the stand, but just, hey, it was, it was te technically on the stand, but, you know, hey, yeah, uh, so and so, yes, we're going to take care of it, yes, we're going to digitize everything, blah, 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 blah. Honestly, I'd like to do it twice uh, as far as as far as the, the filing system goes, because if it gets digitized, and then, and, or, and then, uh, uh, I, I don't even want to give it to them in any sort of way. I want to. I, I hope that there's a program out there that literally just it it it, um, it, it just gives it to them randomly, kind of like what they did with the <laughs> you know, I had to open up something like. No, I'm serious. Like I mean, like, why does it go from April to, to to April 23 to you know to 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 May of 21? Is that, is, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Yeah, how's the feel? How's it feel, government? Now you have an unlimited budget. Oh wait, no, you don't have more. But you know, and how's it feel? How's it feel going through twenty? I mean, you guys don't even know. I mean, my my um, my discovery. I literally went through um, file by file and opened it up because it was unsearchable. It was, you know, they they used these files and saved these things in certain files. They didn't like use it as JPEG. You know, they would do some crazy like uh, 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 file that that no one uses, and you have to download a special program just to open this up a right open up picture. Am. You know, it's insane. They, they did it on purpose. Talk to him about it. You know what I mean? And then they and then they didn't even add everything. Everything you needed the internet to connect to to connect to these. Um, you needed the internet to connect uh, to the rest of the discovery because it was literally on the internet. It'd be like, oh, well, so-and-so's interview is here. And here, the word here would be a link. blue. And you could click on it. Well, guess what? I would click on it. Hey, you're not connected to the internet. You can't get to it. Sorry. Oh, wow. Interesting. Well, what, what, what good does this do to me? Oh, well, okay, well, go to global discovery. Okay, and then and then this is the what this is the spreadsheet of the global discovery. Okay, great. Well, guess what? Guess what? I haven't had in over three years. It's global discovery. And yeah. then you get these lawyers that are just like, hey, trust me, I'm doing the right thing here. And they don't. And 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 they aren't. I mean, I still say that this woman was working with the Fed. This this uh this. This is Maria Rodriguez, this Jake Lang lawyer. You know, Tell them that all that. Go ahead. 
I was going to tell him that that night, digital nightmare that he couldn't make anything searchable, he had all the, that's right up my alley. I, I can do things, it may be time consuming, but I can do things to fix that. I don't think he's allowed to share his discovery with you. I'll, I'll ask his attorney. <laughs> but, you know, I, I can sign NDAs just as much as anybody else, I think. Um, yeah, let's do that because I think you're on to something now. I didn't realize that, so we don't have the documents yet. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them Monday, Monday evening. So, and then I'm going to be in the Supreme Court of Tuesday. So we got to figure out how to get them. So maybe we can talk about that offline. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of work to do in two days, you know. Um, by, by, start, by Friday, do you by, Well, you just said the 19th. Yeah, Does he want it by the hearing? The I, 19th? I don't know. Do you want, yeah, I don't know how that's doable. It would take me longer than that to, to get everything. Open the box. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We got to figure this one out. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Annette. Will, Jay, there's some folks that new, new, uh, uh oh, where'd you go? There you all are. And then uh, Jane said ha hello and hugs Cheryl to you specifically. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining in. So, Chris Quaglin was our first caller. As usual, Chris Quaglin. Hope you got to hear that. So, uh, he needs some help with his gifts and go, as I think a lot of them do still. I mean, think about it. They've gotten support all along as the, the one note from the other um, that we got, you know. They've had family supporting them, so on and so on, but people are tapped out. A lot of them are tapped out. So any little bit can help. A few bucks, anything helps out. So do what Not you can. Not only that, but everybody's 401ks are dropping through the floor the last few days, too. <laughs> Pretty rough. John Pretty rough Thomas time. also needs help with his family of five. He is moved from the gulag. Taylor Jonathan Takis also needs help with give, send, and go. He, he was uh, transferred out of the gulag on um, last week. So uh, he has five kids and a wife, and and uh, everybody needs help. So. Where is he now? He's in Philadelphia. Hello, this is a prepaid call from an inmate at the Washington, D.C. Central Detention Facility. To accept this call, press zero. To refuse this call, hang up or press one. Hello, this is a prepaid call from An inmate at the Washington, D.C. Central Detention Facility. To accept this call, press zero. To refuse your current balance is $10, 30, 5, cents. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using Global Telling. Hello. Hey, 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 Northern Day. How's everybody doing? We're doing good. How are you doing tonight? That's Oh, I'm doing good. This is uh, Jonathan Pollock. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so they've yeah, been keeping you pretty got, busy uh, lately. Yeah. They have been. <laughs> I've been all over the place. They've been uh, throwing all kinds of stuff out there. So, uh, what do you mean? Trying to, trying to, trying to get situated, get into the red of my thing. You know, practicing that national anthem at night. Just, uh, I'm not not much of a conductor, so it's uh. Well, but that's your job. Is that your job now? It is. Oh. Yeah, I took over stable um, stable health. Well, cool. That... So now I do do the national anthem. Awesome. And the news. So you know that yeah. that that national anthem thing is a true leadership position. You know, there's people all over the country waiting on you at nine o'clock to do the leadership thing and, and get that thing going. <laughs> Right, yes, sir. No, it's, it's a big, big deal. So it's, <laughs> yeah. It is. It is. You know, we chuckle, but it, it's it's actually really important. The countdown from three minutes to one no, minute. No, that's right. Yeah. yeah. 
ask him if he got to keep the postcard. That's 100% true. Did, did you receive a postcard lately? Did you get to keep the postcard? Did you get to keep the postcard? postcard. I, I have not. Not lately, no, sir. Yeah. Now, now, what did the postcard, did it, did it have, um, what did it have on it? No, the postcard that Sable conducted the... The postcard that Sable conducted the, 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 the thing. The anthem with. The anthem, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I haven't got one of his, but I did get, I do have one of the um, American flags. I think somebody, one of y'all sent it to me, I think. So I do have one of the postcards that I use. All right, so, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So how's yeah. life been for you this past week? Are you, are you working too hard? Good. The, they're not overworking you, no, enough, are they? No, it's. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want no OSHA good. violations now. <laughs> yeah, don't want that. No, sir. No, I go back and I'm. I'm not used to this sitting around all day. We, you know, we grew up on the ranch, uh, working all day, and you know, you work a little bit at night too, and then you wake up, get back after it every day. So it's uh, just sitting around. Hard to, so hard you, to get used to, but we've been keeping ourselves keeping ourselves busy. We've been making some ways for working out, and then uh, doing uh, trying to get the quotes and uh, um, the different verses, having a little Bible study every night, and then Sunday morning we do a, a church service where we do a little singing and do a little preaching, and uh, we try to pass that around to the fellows that want to share something. And uh, so it's been it's been real good. There's been a lot of guys getting getting into the into the Word of God deeper and deeper, and it's just I mean it's it's, it's been good. So I, I see the Lord working, and uh, it's amazing how the Lord works in all in mysterious ways, and uh, so it's it's been neat <clears throat> trying to trying to stay busy anyways. It is kind of interesting. So that's that's what we got. Yeah. So that's so it. so what I'm getting out of this is. You're not really liking the country club lifestyle there in the gulag. <laughs> yeah, the country club's really not my scene, to be honest with you. It's not really about that. Yeah. No, but uh, it ain't too bad. I ain't got much to complain about. You know, we've been reading um, Thoughts Book of Martyrs, and uh, it's just a book of, you know, the different people that have suffered for uh, suffering for Christ throughout all the years, from Jesus' uh, crucifixion all the way up to the 1800s. And, man, it's something else. So the amount of faith that some of those men went through. And uh, so I look at my situation and I'm like, man, I ain't got nothing to complain about. I have a, I have a bed to sleep on, a roof over my head, and uh, good people to talk to over at Northern Neck. I mean, I ain't got much to complain about. God is good. And so, uh, you know, like Paul said, I got myself unworthy to be counted um, to suffer for the cause of Christ and to suffer for, you know, a cause worth suffering for, if you know what I mean. You know, the yeah. cause of freedom is liberty. Liberty. And uh, so, it, you know, I'm a part of something much bigger than myself. And that's, that's Absolutely. To be proud of. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of amazing how the will of the collective out here and in there is working because you can see all of it starting to come together, can't you? Right, yes sir. No, and, that's 100% true. A lot of people are actually uh, waking up. And, and you know, it's like you were saying, the mysterious ways... I wake up every morning, I take inventory of what I see going on around the world, and I just wonder, I don't know where each trigger point was that caused this thing over here to happen or that thing over there to happen, but by God, it happened. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's no, all... that's what we were talking with somebody. It's yeah. just all coming together. No, we are talking with some... Right. No, we are talking with some of the guys and... Uh... Like you could get lost in that rabbit trail of what if, and I wish I would have done this, and I wish I could have done this. If only we would have done this, 
and uh, you know you get lost in that looking in the past and forgetting about what you could do today. You know, but it's you know those key points in history that you, you have no idea about until it's already gone, until it's already passed. And so it's that's what it's, what it's all about: staying vigilant, being aware of what's happening, and, and being war, seeing the warning signs of what is about to happen, and making sure that the American people rise, you know, stand up and keep their heads out of the sand, keep their heads out of cell phones, and actually see what's happening in their own country. Yep. And uh, try to start standing up so it doesn't just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And then one day we wake up and it's illegal to, you know, to yep. <laughs> go to church and to leave us do all these different things. And we're like, wait, second, what just happened? How did we get to this point? You yeah. Know, because, you know, we, we fell asleep. You know, I, I, I tell people a lot of times it's kind of what you were just talking about, um, worrying about what already happened and what you should have, could have done. I drive my car looking through the windshield, not through the rear window. Yeah, no, that's it. Exactly. That, that rear view mirror, that small, but that front windshield, that big. Yep. Plenty of room to look. Yep. There's a lot going on out there, too. You look forward, you don't look back. Yeah. You know. That's it. We, that's what one, one guy said. He said, we learn from the past and we plan for the future, but we live in today. What are you going to do today? Right. Yeah. Work for tomorrow. I'm not sure if it was Martin. Luther, it. I'm not sure if it was Martin Luther King or not, but I heard a saying something about: Wouldn't it be a shame to learn that you slept through a revolution? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be so right. awful. Man. That would be so yep. awful. Wake up one day and wow, I just missed out on one of the biggest things that happened in history. Can you imagine down on maybe the turn turn of America. Can you imagine those dummies just one day just standing there in the in, in the middle of a shopping mall somewhere and going, What, what, what? What just happened? How come I didn't see that? <laughs> that <good. laughs> Wait, it's like that. Oh, it wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't on Instagram, this wasn't on Facebook. Yep. <laughs> How did I miss that? Oh man, yeah, exactly. That's the way it works too. Man, oh, wow. That's that's what's sad. I see, see so many of these kids and, and different people, you know, drive down the road and you might see them look up from their phone maybe a couple of times just to see where they're going. And they just live in that thing, live in that phone where they have no clue of the awareness around them, have no clue of their surroundings, what's happening, what's even happening in the country around them. And it just, I mean, that's exactly how communism starts though. You start separating each other, you start separating people, get them to look over here, and they'll do something over here. And make them, you know, get to distract the people, and then you can do whatever you want. You feed them with all these, um, you know, these pleasures where they don't even want freedom anymore. Because freedom is work. Freedom is responsibility for each man. Freedom is you are the man of your own home. You are, you know, you are the commander of your own world in a way. And when you have freedom, you are responsible for your own actions. You can't blame it on what somebody else or some, you know, well, this person let me do it. Or, no, it's you. You're the one. But you give these freedoms up for so many times. People give all these freedoms up just for security, for that easier life. You know, if we just put more rules, then we don't have to worry about. Um, you know, worry about making ourselves better and entering our society. It's just, just throw them all in jail. And, you know, we just keep throwing them all in jail. And that'll, that'll fix everything. Right. We don't have enough jails for that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and our jails are already overflowing. Well, you know, you, you mentioned that it's easy to, to, to become communist. And, and I believe that's true because of these flat screen devices that we have. Um, so, so how do we teach children, and, and this is a legit question, how do we teach children that the effort necessary to maintain freedom is actually worth it when they're already so lazy? Oh, yeah. No, that's it. Um, my, my, my dad, he taught us, and we were taught very different than a lot of people, but we can talk uh, honor and respect, and respecting each other. Um, 
then it gave us all these different ways, different out, outlooks of fun in a way, you know, we, we played football, we did all these different things, and he taught us all kinds of different ways to build build stuff and taught us different traits, and uh, so when phones came around, we got into them a little bit, but it wasn't our, our life in a way, you know, you, you kind of felt dumb looking at a phone for over 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you felt like, oh man, now I'm lazy. <laughs> These kids that grown up, that's all, that's all they've ever had, it, it's tough, I don't, I don't really know how you would you know, uh, take them off of that into a whole new new way of looking at life and a whole new way of building their own imagination to come up with their own ways of having fun. Uh, if kids are always go for the shiniest thing. You yeah. know, the funnest thing, they're always going to want that, you know, shiniest toy. But when you take the shiniest thing away from them and tell them to have fun with something else, I think, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a parent, so I can't really necessarily say. So, uh, I think it starts from the very beginning. Parents have to start, you know, seeing for themselves, wanting to be more involved in their kids' lives, because it is so easy just to give your kid, hey, here's a phone, just stay out of my way for a while, just go play with this for a while, instead yep. of, you know, investing their parents' time with their kids. Because that's what kids really want, is that, that special time with their parents, to have one-on-one -on -one time. But it, it's uh, too easy for parents just to give them a cell phone and say, all right, you just go play with this and leave me alone for a while. Let me have my quiet time. Yep. It, it takes work. It, it, parents, parenting takes a whole lot of work, you know, investing your life in your kids' lives. It so does. It does. It, you may not be a parent, but it sounds like you'd make a good one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, maybe one day. <laughs> well, I met your mom and dad, by the way, John, so I, I, I know what you're talking about there. Those are some good salt-of-the-earth people. I mean, some of the best po folks I've ever met, so I'm proud to know them. And oh, thank, a, li thank you. a little bit of it must have rubbed off on you, so there you go. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Yep. No, they, they are. They're good people. You have one minute remaining. And that's, that's the key. When you're around good people, you know, it, it tends, to, tends to rub off some of their mannerisms. Yeah. That, try to get yourself around good people. Yeah. So thank you all again for letting me, letting me speak. And uh, I'll try to catch you all on the next one. All right. All right. Talk thank to you later. See you all. Bye. All right, John Pollock. Thank you for using Global Telly. He's one of what? Eight. Eight, yeah, that's yeah. the other thing. So his sister, uh, Olivia, right, uh -huh. is in the DC Gulag. She's stalking them when they're out playing cornhole. She can see them. She can see them yeah. out there? No kidding. That's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. <clears throat> you know, that just sounded odd. Just saying. That name, Cornhole, it by itself sounds like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I am Cornholio. <laughs> and for those who don't know, Sable conducted that J6 Choir, both for the recording of the J6 Choir song and the national anthem with a postcard. That's all he had. So really? that's how he did it. That's why I asked him if he got the postcard. Oh, that's nice. I don't know how much of this is getting on to here, guys. So, what? Sorry. It's okay. No, it's great. It's good news. I'm gonna let you let you repeat it if you wouldn't mind. So we have I didn't a shadow understand. guest over here. This is this is Heather, but I didn't understand. So that. for those who don't know, Sable conducted both the song that was recorded for the J6 Choir recording and the national anthem every night. He actually went to school and was in the choir in college. And he literally conducted the the music with a postcard, and he would raise it up and bring it down as their pitch was supposed to go up and down. Hello, this is a prepaid call from. An inmate at the Washington D.C. Central Detention Facility. 
To accept this call, press zero. To re your current balance is $8.67. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using Global Telling. Hello from Northern Neck. Hey guys, hey, it's Franklin again. Hold on. So we are gonna we are going to do uh, a first ever gender reveal party um, for uh, uh, we're gonna do our first ever ever gender reveal party for Miller's I'm Miller, I'm or I'm sorry, I'm not an FBI agent, I swear, Miller. Um, we're we're gonna do we're gonna do a, a gender reveal party for his uh, his soon to be uh, soon to be party or soon to be uh, soon to be baby. Uh, uh, he is he is dropping the ball right now because he's trying to call up VC Mitchell at the same time, and um, I was supposed to call you guys up, and I'm absolutely stalling for time right now. <laughs> uh, so let me so, ask you. Uh, well, let me yeah. ask, let me so, ask you uh, a question. That, that, um, what's that? That, that digital search ability of, of all that data that you were talking about a few minutes ago, um, if I yes, can get, if I can get my hands on that material, I can fix all of that. Yeah, you can you can have it. Listen, you can have it. Just talk to my talk to my lawyer. I'm giving you permission to have it, but you just be, before anything gets sent out, just talk to my lawyer. Uh, before anything goes out, uh, goes out um, um, like like in the open. You know what I mean? Yeah. Talk to my lawyer. So I'll give, um, I'll give you. I'll give you. Uh, Tom, Tom has her uh, email. Perfect. She's a, she's a Trumper. You I know, she's too. she's she's on board and she's down because um, I just I just bash everyone uh, on the BC visual. I just bash everyone, including my uh, lawyer. And this needs to get out. I think it needs to get out as soon as possible. Um, but uh. Uh, so are we, are, are, are we, are we going on right now? All right, so I'm going to give you to Miller. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, hold on, guys. i got to introduce myself to uh, Northern Neck. Hey, Northern Neck, how's it going? How's it going? How we doing? Pink or blue? <laughs> you guys tell us what we're doing. Okay, so, so just so everybody's aware, uh, both the DC and the Northern Neck vigils are occurring simultaneously. I'm broadcasting to both of you right now from the Patriot Pod at the DC Jail. We're doing a gender reveal party for my child, which is coming in four short months. I just found out the gender earlier today, and everybody out there that's listening to the podcast, everybody here in the pod is about to find out the gender right now. Are you guys ready? We're ready. <laughs> okay, excellent. All right, Patriot Pod, are you guys ready? All right, hold on, everybody go ahead. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna make sure. 
I'm going to make sure he can bench 135, he can run a six minute mile, he can throw a perfect spiral, and he can wheel a 600cc motorcycle by the time he turns five. <laughs> nice. Uh, everybody shout out, shout, out to my, shout out to my wonderful wife, she just gave me the news today. Uh, I love you baby, um, she's listening right now, obviously. Um, everybody's giving me thumbs up and high fives and everything. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. Congratulations. It's going to be good. Thank it's, you. It's, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Okay. I, need to, uh, I, need to, I, need to, I need to find everybody giving me fist bumps right now. I'm also <laughs> I'm talking to both Vizzles at once. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, my, yeah, I could I couldn't be happier. My wife uh, just gave me the news uh, four hours ago. Um, uh, well, a little a little bit more than four hours ago, um, and we're we're both so happy. Uh, of course, I would we would have been happy either way. I would have been happy if it was a girl because I know that's what she wanted. Uh, but she's happy that it's a boy because that's what I wanted. Um, and I just I mean I just feel so blessed. Um, and, and we're gonna we're gonna have a boy. We're gonna start a family. <laughs> so now you're yeah. gonna start picking out names. Yep. Oh yep. my! Yep. And 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 I'm and I'm seeing here that um, you're 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 okay. you're, get, okay. you're you're getting short. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, DC. Thank you, DC Vigil. I uh, yep. You guys. Uh, um, all right. I gotta sign off on the DC Vigil. No. Okay. Okay, okay, good night, DC Mitchell. Thank you guys. I love you. Thank you all for the support. All right, bye bye. All right. All right, hey, Northern Deckard. Are you guys still on there with me? Yeah, we're we are. Here. I noticed that you're getting short. Right. You're getting short, buddy. I'm getting. Yeah. I'm getting short. What do you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at um, the wrong line. Never mind. Disregard. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to get your hopes up right there. On, right on, right on. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> now you're gonna have to start gotcha, picking gotcha, out gotcha. some. You're gonna have to pick out some names for that August baby. Yeah, actually, we have a name picked out already. I think it's gonna be Jonas. Um, oh. Nice. That's a name. Uh, yeah, got, got a name picked out. Yeah, we we got all that set up. Thank you, thank you, brother Touch. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's anyway, I don't, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> oh, it's I exciting. Didn't really, I didn't really uh, have much time to plan this out, but yeah. Uh, you know, I could just hear the excitement of everybody around you, and that just shows what you guys have. What a great, great support network you guys have with one another in there. I mean, just I, that's amazing. <coughs> you can hear it. I can feel it over the phone. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're, at the end of the day, like, we're all going through kind of the same thing together. I mean, each of us, um, you know, got our own unique situation. We each have our own personal struggles that we're going through. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're all kind of on the same team, and, and uh, we all want to see each other do as best, uh, as, best as we can, and, um, you know, just uh, live, live to see a brighter day, basically. And um, uh, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we could uh, <laughs> have something fun to kick off the weekend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <coughs> announce, announce this to you guys. And, um, obviously, I'm so thankful for y'all, for all support and everything. And just having the <coughs> members to tell us that they, you know, they support us really, really helps a lot. So you're all drinking uh, so, blue yeah. Kool-Aid, right? You're all drinking blue Kool-Aid now? and. Yep, we're, we're all, that's right. We're all, we all got the blue Kool-Aid. It's flowing. Everybody's happy. Everybody's uh, doing good. So, and um, also, yeah, had... your sentencing is next week. Go ahead. Next, your sentencing is next week on the nineteenth. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up. So I'm not gonna lie to you. I've been pretty stressed out. Um, you know, obviously, it's, it's, it's you know, it's never, <laughs> never something that you want to do. Never something that I thought I'd have to do. But um, it just is what it is. But uh, you know, so this is kind of a. A nice, a nice uh, reprieve from from that, and and I know that you know when this is all over, I'm gonna have you know my beautiful wife to go back to. I'm gonna have our uh, our dog, and I'm gonna have a, a little boy to go back to. And I just pray that that day comes uh, soon. But I know that uh, you know God's in control, and, and however long it takes, um, He'll see us through it, and He'll help us get through it. And, 
Um, you know, it's the struggles and the hardships in life that uh, make you who you are. So, um, you know, I think I think the, the best thing is just to be grateful for, for whatever you're going through and just trust God in it. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. And, and my wife is on the same page, and she's been incredibly strong throughout all this. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> That's all I can say about it, really. <laughs> Good attitude, absolutely great attitude. So, and so many of you guys are impressive. I mean, I just, I love the, I love the way you, you, you think about this stuff. I, I got to ask you that question. Are there, there's what, about thirty of you in there now? Um, actually, we're down to about twenty. We, uh, we've had several guys leave, um, in the last uh, month or so. Uh, so I think I think we're down to just 20 actually. So okay. it is a little bit quieter. Yeah, yeah. Right. Change any moment. Um, you know, we still have fun and everything. Uh, we're still working out. I had an awesome workout uh, just an hour ago. Uh, you know, I guess I guess hearing the news that I was having a boy really motivated me to have a you know a killer workout. <laughs> oh, good. Um, yeah. And you know, I just, you know, obviously wanted, wanted to get myself pumped up for this whole event. So. Uh, but yeah, yes. we're we're doing pretty good in here. They did they they, they, uh, they finally turned the air conditioning on. Uh, it was either today or I guess I guess it was last night. So it's it's uh, it's livable in here. We're not all uh, we're not all sweating our, our brains out. Um, so yeah, so uh, life life goes on here in the pod. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have some stories to tell that young in years. <laughs> You're gonna have some serious stories. Oh, to tell I know, you. I know, man. Yeah, and and you know, and the, <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah, cool I part, mean, the cool part is, if, if if we can all recover a little bit, he's he's gonna be going to school one day, and maybe your name's gonna be in some chapter of a history book. It definitely will be. Yeah. What about him? We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Are you gonna put him on the? Yeah. Are you gonna put only, him on the? Only bingo God knows the future. That's true. That is on the bingo card. <laughs> yeah, you oh, man, you know, card. yeah, actually, I was, I was, I was gonna make that part of the bingo card, and you know, Scott has a boy or Scott has a girl, but the secret's out now, so yeah, uh, I, I can't use it now. I'll just, I'll just think of something else. <laughs> yeah, you have to put, yeah, but there's plenty, there's plenty of other stuff I can put on that. Everybody's gonna have to guess the weight now. I think that's a that's more of a female thing, guess Cheryl. The weight. Sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You could, you could, you could. Yeah. <laughs> How about the hair color? Are we... No. <laughs> yeah. What, when's the due date? What's the due date? What's All right, due date. Due date, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of places. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys, uh, yeah, work, work out all of your side bets ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You might not have much contact with me when, when the, <laughs> the amount of time the baby actually gets here. So uh, you guys are going to have to work out all your, your side bets. Um, <laughs> uh, without me, unfortunately, but, um, yeah. but yeah, yeah, so. Well, I gotta get a bingo uh, card from you. I gotta get a bingo card. card. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write you for a bingo card, all right? Okay. <laughs> I am okay, too. we'll do, we'll do, sir. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, okay, sounds good. It's not Cheryl, right? Yes, Cheryl. And Maurice is here, too. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. I'll start working on that soon. <laughs> get some paper. So yeah, so I get the paper. Yeah, oh, we got we got plenty of paper in here. Plenty of paper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just it's just about finding finding time to do it. You know, I, I thought I would be uh I thought I would be doing nothing but like reading and writing when I got here, but it's uh it's actually kind of the opposite. There's um it's uh <laughs> you know there's always like. I don't know. It's, it's hard to describe this. But there's kind of there's kind of always things going on in here, kind of not. I mean, it's just, it's a uh, it's an interesting place. Uh, it's an interesting place. So I look forward to sharing all the the, the wacky. You stuff. have one minute remaining. So well, anyway, um, I'm glad that you guys could be a part of the uh, the uh, uh, in, uh, very uh, spontaneous and impulsively planned gender reveal party. Um, <laughs> uh, as always, thank you guys, and um, uh, uh, probably you guys will probably be hearing from me again um, once or twice. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe not over the next seven days, um, but uh, 
uh, definitely in the future, and definitely if you write to me. Um, yeah. So thank you guys. Uh, I love you all very much. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll pass this off to uh, whoever we have coming up next. Alrighty then. Good luck next week. All right. Thank you, Scott. Good bless you. Good luck next week on your sentencing. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. And uh, if Angel's listening, uh, I love you, baby. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Good night, everybody. Good All right. Night. Good night. All right. Adios. Thank you for using Global Tell Link. You know why people can't hear me? Let's get it closer. You don't know why people can't hear me. I'm like. Here, and yet, I'm over got, here on the other side of the room, and they can hear me. I think you just got to project it once you, you know, take a so deeper I breath. Teach you how to do that thing. Hey, listen, I want to give a shout out here to Anderson Elevator Drilling that called in. Here's a, here's a comment: History will remember the grace and the tenacity of of you, of you political prisoners. And uh, thanks, thanks a lot, Jim, for calling in, man. I appreciate it. Everybody else, too. And please share these wide and far. This is the first time we've ever been on a joint vigil with D.C. They're going on at the same time, always are, and we kind of compete a little bit. This is the first time we got to actually be on there with them, so um, we'll have to That's give them a cool. shout-out. That is really, truly kind of cool. I, I think we also need to shout-out those um, um, live stream addresses for the D.C. vigil, because anybody who's tuning in here now, you probably know it already, but some of you that, that don't, you can go on every single night to the DC vigil that's outside of the jail where these 20 individuals are hanging out. I think 20 there's men, more. One. 20 yeah, Heather, do you know how many there are? There? There's about 20. They've said it a couple times this week. Wow. And if you go to forashley.com, I think they list all the. So oh, that's great. Thank you, Heather. For Ashley, the number four, Ashley, A S H L I. Dot com and and you can certainly get them different people's live streams so I think um, for instance one is um, sapphire Patriot yeah sapphire Patriot um, what's what's, Ro what's Rogers 1791 stormtrooper. 1791 stormtrooper so Roger usually gets there pretty early and Roger does a narration he stays behind the camera the whole time and he talks to people and he's got a huge number of followers i don't know how many but it's just gigantic and people are on there saying hello to one another and all that so it's kind of cool to see our little community growing here too and people signing in and saying hello to the other people they recognize and some of them will jump back and forth from vigil to vigil or or do both at the same time but yeah just definitely check out the dc vigil and you get more of this direct communication from america's very own political prisoners yeah so. that's the count the count for the number of days goes back to the day of january 6th it starts with chris albert's arrest because at the time he was thought to be the first one so it's around 720 that the count changes. So if you looked at it before the vigil, it said one thing. If you look at it now, it says a different number. So 720 p.m. on January 6th, is that the first? That's my understanding. The first arrest? Yes. And who was that? That was the first arrest that they knew of at that time. It was Chris Alberts. Chris Alberts. Yep. Oh, I have not confirmed it yet, but I have saw and BOP says that the guy with cancer was released yesterday, but we're waiting on confirmation from somebody who's connected to the family to confirm that. Cancer where? The guy from Florida. Julio. Yeah. Yeah, Julio. Julio Vaccaro. Hello, this is a prepaid call from what sentence an inmate at the Washington, D.C. Central Detention Facility. To accept this call, what press your current balance is $6.99. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and reporting. Thank you for using Global Telling. Why, hello there, good people. Oh, no, they're not. <laughs> howdy, howdy. Howdy, who's there? Hello, 
this would be your man with the, uh, three first names. Oh, ah. John George Todd. <laughs> Mr. Todd. John George Todd the third. That is correct. Ding, ding, ding. You are the winner. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How is everybody doing tonight? We're hey, doing good. We're doing great. We don't have any blue Kool-Aid, but we're still, we're doing great. I, you know what would be hilarious is if uh, Scott's baby did come out blue. So then I could say, I'm blue, da do dee da do da <laughs> That would just make my day. <laughs> That's blue funny. Is, blue is not a good color for me. Yeah, I, we don't I disagree. Blue is my favorite color, so if I had a baby and it, it came out with blue skin, I, I would be ecstatic. <laughs> I, I would think that's like... That'd be a smirk. You know what? If it's still breathing in blue, I'd be ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want a legit blue baby here. <laughs> I, I would love to have, like... I'll even die his skin for the first week. It's okay. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh, my. How's everything going over there? And then see if I could get... Oh, it's going good. Uh, you know, uh, uh, about to finish another book. Uh, so, so far, I'm read, I've read about six. It's taken me my whole life to get through these six books, but I, I'm, I'm there. Um, <laughs> One of them was Robin, which somebody sent in, and that was a really good book. I sent that in. This uh, is Cheryl Johnson. Yes, and I love that. Uh, it, it was a really good great book. I don't know if you ever read it, but it's worth it. I thought it would be fun for you. What was the book again, Cheryl? Uh, Robin I Williams. Actually relate. Robin. Robin and Williams. And to come to find out, the reason he killed himself was he had uh, a fatty protein that built up in his brain which caused dementia and he was starting to lose himself and like uh, they didn't realize it until after his death. Ah. But it tells you that in the book. I did not know that. His suicide wasn't, his suicide wasn't because of what everybody thought was a drug overdose or like anything else. It was literally just because of uh, he was starting to lose his mind and everything and his body was starting to deteriorate and I think he realized it and wanted to go out on his own terms. Wow. Did not know that. Yeah. It's something called like dibs or something. I, I can't remember the exact term but it is caused by a protein built up in the brain. Wow. That sounds like a, 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 a house diagnosis. Amyloidosis. <laughs> In the brain. Yeah, yeah. That's that's funny. Sort of. Something that they find out in autopsies. Yeah. Yeah, they find that stuff. You know, they 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 take off the top of the skull and they start slicing and dicing the brain. Wow. Find some mushy parts. Yep. That's crazy. I wonder how many blank spaces they're gonna find in mine when they do an autopsy. <laughs> blank spaces. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sorry, we hit the erase button in this section. Hey, John, I don't know, are you old enough to remember the Jetsons? The Jetsons? Uh, the, car the Jetsons? Yes, yes. All right. With uh, the dog, Elroy. El yeah. Elroy and the dog. Yep. And George, yeah. George goes to the doctor one day and he's supposed to take this pill, which is really an electronic device that's, you know, it's a tiny, tiny, uh, diagnostic device and and he goes to 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 take it and he coughs and it goes into the mummy that's happening to be in the corner of the room and so it goes inside the mummy and it's bouncing around in this big cavernous area of uh, basically you know nothingness so that's what you made me think of um, <laughs> 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 help jane stop this I'm crazy thing that. <laughs> a couple other uh, books that uh, you should have over there is a couple of uh, George Carlin books. Have you come across those over at the uh, Gulag? Uh, George Carlin. Yeah, Last Words. Uh, I don't know. 
Ask, I have not seen any. Ask, uh, ask, that doesn't Scooter. mean that they're not here. Ask Scooter about it. Okay. I, I will. I mean, people keep handing me books left and right, and I actually have to play catch up. Uh, but I'm almost through all the books that people have sent me. There's two more that I have um, to finish. And then I've read all the books that have been sent. Um, and then the ones that people just come into my room and they're like, hey, you need to read this. Uh, there's like three of those. And I'm like, man, my book collection's starting to just grow. Well, yeah. that's cool. That's cool. Do you guys, you guys share stuff all the time? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like uh, the greatest uh, espionage story of the Cold War. Uh, that one was Miller's. He let me read it because he wasn't finished the book. Um, which was about the first British spy, or Russian spy, that switched to uh, uh, also works for British, uh, British MI5 and MI6. And he actually was the highest ranking, uh, uh, what's it called? I had ranking spy, and then so when they finally got him, they had to extradite him from uh, Russia, and they had just got him right before he was he was taken into custody by Russia. Wow. KGB, I think, is what you were looking for. And they, yes, he was working for KGB, but uh, he also they used the baby to get him out. Really. How they do that? They changed the diaper. They changed the diaper on the trunk of the car where the dog was sniffing, uh, and then they dropped a poopy diaper right in front of the dog's face, and it all happened out of coincidence and good timing that it was able to happen like that. But uh, that deterred the dog and made him go off to a different area, and they were able to successfully extract the guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pretty interesting. That, I, who, who would have thought that baby poop could be that useful? <laughs> That's funny. I, I mean, if you've ever had a baby, you could understand why it would make a toast sick. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, there are diapers I was like, how in the world are, is anybody in the house still, like, breathing? Yeah, exactly. It'll clear an airplane hanger. <laughs> it's it's oh. bad juice. So that's fascinating. Never take a baby in a bunker. <laughs> no, don't do that, because everybody be coming out. <laughs> yeah. Everybody be coming out. <laughs> oh, man. So. What What do they call them, the doomsday preppers, or for the retirees without, without entrance? Um, I know I saw So this. when they have the bomb shelters and everything, they don't get to take a baby in there with them? No. No. No, there's 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 no way to escape that if you put that in there. <laughs> you can't I, do that. I would probably have to have a hyperbolic chamber just to be able to escape with its own hair flow from something. Yeah, that would be a good thing. Jeez. But it all goes away, you know, it only happens a few times a day. You could probably make it. No. I just for not doing that. Or? Yeah, it is. Um, I think I think you have better odds at a casino. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so your odds at the casino are the same whether you play or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I used to go into the casino with my buddies and they'd be like, why are you only walking in with $80 more? Because I like my money. Right, yes. Right, exactly. Casinos are... And well, if I do lose $80, then yeah. I guess I know I'm not eating out for lunch every day. You know, I don't know any wealthy people that play the lottery either. There's there's probably wisdom in that. Uh, no, I don't know any either. And the ones that did play the lottery and didn't win are not wealthy anymore, usually. That's a fact. Right. I think they're... I think there's a handful of people that have not just, you know, flushed away all their money. Yep, yep, that's true. And it seems like the younger they are when they win, the, the faster they go. Some of them are actually dead. 
Um, yeah. So. I would think to turn it into like a business. Yeah, you know, I, I, I wrote it. Uh, never mind. Just. <laughs> hey, John, I want to ask you a question. Are you guys following the Supreme Court case next week? Are you, are you guys thinking about that? Or does anybody really care? What's your thoughts? Uh, I don't know what the Supreme Court case is next week. Um, but I, I, I don't try to watch a whole bunch of news. Well, it's the 1512 the, the, Yeah, the 1512C wow. case is next week. So I've been waiting on that, um, especially since I have one of those. But at the same time, um, it's just one of those extra charges that just get dropped and I still got so uh, yeah, 111 A and B. So I mean, it would help me, but it wouldn't like super help me either. Yep. Yeah. Well. Because they both have some of your maxes, uh, the ones that I have. So. Okay. But it might help with my point too, because you know. Yeah. You know. But I did follow that the that the appeals court said it was a ceremonious proceeding, and therefore the fifty twelve been carrying weight, and they uh, they dropped the one, but that was only one case that I heard of. Yeah, the, on appeal, right? But but I, this this would take it take it away completely. From everybody. From including, everything, yeah. Yeah, from all 300 plus Donald Trump was charged with it too. You know. But that also helps by adding precedent uh, since the appeals court did that, that now they have more of a chance to overturn it in, in court. Okay. I assume. I think you're right. You know, when you read the, the complaint that's in front of the Supreme Court on this, there's words like egregious and things like that, talking about the, the nature of the actions of the government against you guys, egregious, far-reaching, overreaching. Yeah. Yep. And, and you know, when, 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 when you think about it, you, you, you've got, you guys are being charged by somebody who had to really stretch to find something that they could force to stick. That behavior alone is worth not just investigating, but taking to court. Absolutely, like the head prosecutor and all this. I, I hate to be that clown because he, he's a total ass um, And I, I hope he knows that I'll sit next to him in the trial of the preacher and his wife um, uh, prior to my, my uh, guilty and incarceration day, uh, but uh, when I sat next to you, you just reached evilness, and I, I hope that after all this is said and done, uh, that man sees his day in court, even though prosecutors are usually found to be immune from all this stuff, which is crazy that, you know, the people that stretch everything and get people to perjure themselves on stands as witnesses, are, are the most protected, so they can do the dirtiest things to people. You know, it's funny talking about sitting next to somebody. I sat next to Harry Dunn, Officer Harry Dunn, at one of the trials. It was, I think, it was the Oath Keepers trial. And uh, you have one minute remaining. I didn't sense evil, but I sensed uncaring. Did not care one bit at all about what they're doing to people. So that's my two cents. Oh, absolutely. It's either evil or they just don't care enough to do their job the right way. Which is like, it's kind of like, you know, their lawful orders are saying. If it's not lawful or you know that it's immoral, or something, you have the right to say, who is that I'm not doing? Right. But too many people just follow and say, screw it. Yep. Yep. True that. <sighs> All right. You want to shout out your Gibson Go or anything? I don't have my gifts in bill, but I do have my inmate number, 388351. Uh, if anybody could help with my tablet stuff, that'd be amazing. I think there's only like $7 for it, so. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, John. Uh, that's the only thing I could think of. Thank you, guys. We love you, guys. Take care of yourself. Be good have now. Have a good night. You too. Thank you for using Global Tell Link.
Do you know how this tablet thing works? Because I don't. I um, don't either. <clears throat> It's the getting out app. Getting out app. So that's when folks say help with the tablet, they're asking for us they're to go. They're asking in. you to go there and put it on the inmates account. So you can look up the inmates account on getting out the app. Is that phone only or you can do it on your computer too? Well, the first time I did it, I had to do it on my computer. I had to do it on like Firefox. I couldn't do it on an off browser. But now I can do it on the phone. All right, so getting out is the thing. And then you can look up the inmate by name or number, right? Mm -hmm. He gave us his number, 388-351, and he's down to seven bucks on his tablet. So that restricts the amount of phone calls you can make. That's probably what, you know, these, these calls are a couple bucks for 15 minutes. So um, he's only got a few calls left. And you can also go to Patriot Mail Project and they should have their name and number. Do you have a microphone? No. Yes. Yes. You can also go to Patriot Mail and you can find their name and number and it's usually spelled correctly. They work very hard to do that. All right. Got it. Thank you. How are we doing? Yeah, it's, it's, it should be fairly straightforward. So I hope they wait a couple minutes to call because then we can finish up. He just won't answer. <laughs> <laughs> they have to wait at least five minutes. Ten is better. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. I didn't know the whole thing about the postcard and, and you know, the fact that he's conducting. Um, Ava, I heard that David was, his sentencing was postponed, is what I heard from Mickey um, on Freedom Corner. So yeah, we were wondering the same thing. David Geetson. I asked Scooter, but he got off the tablet. Now I'm asking Quaglin, but, but if Mickey said it was postponed, it was postponed. Yeah, I didn't see anywhere in the news, so yeah. I, I'm surprised that we're, you know, kind of behind, I'm kind of behind on these hearings and sentencings next Friday. So let me just confirm that again. So Scott Miller just told us his sentence is next Friday, the 19th of April, At correct? 2 o'clock. 2 p.m. Um, Zach Alam is 10 a.m. and, I, you know, and it would be interesting to see that. He's not somebody, we did support him financially when he was here. He is uh, probably an Antifa guy, um, from what we can tell. So it will be interesting to see the kind of sentence he gets. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling it's probably gonna be just similar to the rest because he, he was pretty violent. If you recall, he broke a lot of stuff. Um, but and Chris's hearing's also on the 19th. So it's a big day on the 19th, next Friday. Yeah. And Chris Quaglin's hearing is on April 19th also at 2 o'clock. So you're right. going to have to um, break yourself into two pieces if you want to see your Scott Miller and Chris Quaglin because mm -hmm. they're both at 2 o'clock on the 19th. What would King Solomon do? <laughs> well, let's go together in mass and let's do it. Let's break it up. Let's go, go here and go there. And uh, you can't record it, you can't take photographs, you can't do anything. You can take plenty of notes and you can draw pictures. My court reporter pictures, you guys, I got to bring them here one night and let, let you see them. They're, they're quite pathetic. Like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they stick figures. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, <laughs> my artwork is Captain probably Carter. not as good as that. <laughs> It was actually Stuart Rhodes I was drawing the one day, and uh, it was sort of a profile. He had the glasses, he has a goatee gone, and you know, that's a lot. You know, I mean, when I start with the little oval and I go from there, it just I just got overwhelmed. But um, it was interesting to uh, to be at that, and I really encourage everybody go to these sentences, go to these trials. It's easy to get into the courthouse. It's just like going through the metal detector at the airport, but faster. Um, and you just yes, find a way around. you're not behind the jurors. Yeah, if you get behind a bunch of jurors, then you, you messed up. You might as well go back outside and feed the pigeons for a bit. But um, yeah, it's not hard to get in there. They got a nice cafeteria. People are friendly, you know, and uh, 
you can just go and sit down in the back of the courtroom and watch what's going on to our fellow citizens in this country and the, the, the one-sided slantedness of the whole system there from the judges on down. And judges, if you're listening, I know you're not because you don't really care but and wouldn't want to say anything too derogatory, but come on, are you serious? How can you go along with this? This is what we talk about. How do people get to this point where you can't even tie what you're doing back to our own constitution? There's just no, it makes no sense. But uh, again, <clears throat> unless it's people that are just <clears throat> so corrupted and so beyond the pale that they just don't care anymore. It's like, these people that wrote Robert's Rules of Order no longer follow Robert's Rules of Order. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cray-cray. You know, there's certain procedures that are supposed to take place. There's certain vettings and validations and all of that. And you don't get to recycle cherries. That kind of violates the rules uh, a little bit. Or re the resentence. resentencing. And, and resentencing is akin to double jeopardy, is it not? I mean, you had your way the first time when he was found guilty, you passed sentence, you don't get to go back and say, oh, no, wait a second. We reconsidered that. Does the sentenced individual get to reconsider a few things too? I don't think so. Not right. It's broken. It works one way. No, it's called the field and they charge you. I don't even want to know how much for them. Yeah, so that's a, kind of another thing. You know, we, we just heard Chris Quaglin talking about $300,000 for his defense. You know what that actually says? That justice is really only available to the people who can afford it. Right. Uh -huh. And all the rest of everybody else that can't afford it, I don't mean to slam attorneys, you got to make a buck, but I don't have $300,000 floating around. If I got in trouble, I'd go find a hole and rot in it. That's, our justice system is broken. $300,000 and he never went to trial. 300000 and never went to trial. Wow, what a money grab. It's all about the money. And hasn't had full access to his discovery. I think I told you guys when I went to his last hearing, he came like a beeline as soon as he was let into the courtroom straight to his file folders and started leafing through it standing there and then started to interrupt the judge from there on but um which he did did just very right up to the point and it's good but yeah he hasn't even had a chance to really review his discovery in all this time pieces of it railroad kangaroo hmm this is broken looks like we're going to have a few minutes we got we got what we asked for I want to read to you a, a little letter to the editor um, that I thought was pretty interesting from somebody locally. <clears throat> and I'll just kind of, well, I'll just go ahead with it. The Lancaster Democrats must be running out of topics to assign to, t to party members. Trump responsible for slow mail delivery? Really? By all means, please deliver your mail with your Prius so we aren't subjected to nonsensical musings. But here's the difference between Democrats and Republicans, lack of Prius notwithstanding. Democrats do things for the good of the party. The flawed logic being what's good for the party is good for the country. The most obvious example is the absolute promotion of illegal immigration. Good for the party, bad for the country. Republicans, on the other hand, do things for the good of the country. The logic being what's good for the country is good for the party. I think Republicans have the correct order of importance which is why I'm no longer a Democrat. With regards to your letter's contribution in this political season, I follow, find the following to be particularly apropos. Not only did the Bolsheviks, read Democrats, seem to swell on the same sort of subject matter day to day, like Trump, they celebrate such a narrow set of views that one inevitably felt as if one had read it all before. And he is basically quoting that from a gentleman in Moscow from Armor Towels 2016. I had not read that one. Yeah, yeah. E even Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has said that Biden, not Trump, is the greater threat to American democracy and that January 6th was not an insurrection. 
It wasn't even close, except to the most partisan Democrats. No defendant has been tried for insurrection. Remember that. What insurrection? Yeah, you know, the legacy media, I'm not even calling them mainstream, they don't warrant the word mainstream. Legacy media <laughs> um, labeled the event as an insurrection, and yet the government can't seem to find it with a wherewithal to actually charge somebody for an insurrection. No one's been charged with what one person was removed from political office. Yeah, all of that. That's, you know, people need to wake up and see some of this stuff. You know, if, if this, then why that? It, because they don't add up, and there's like a million pairs of data points that we can say, if this one, that one can't exist. Like the one we just said. If you labeled it an insurrection, why has nobody really been charged with an insurrection? I, I don't get it. You can't have it both ways. Well, they are having it both ways because that's why I was asking about the 1512C charge, as we said earlier. If that gets overturned, the judges have already said, we're going to go back, I'm repeating myself, but we're going to go back and we're going to put consecutive sentences together they instead of... already started that. Right, right. With so Billy Cressman, he, he stated with Billy Cressman, even if the 1512 were not charged to you, I would sentence you this way anyway. And, and just repeat that, because I don't know if it's picking up. With Billy Cressman, the judge, I want to say it was Kelly, but I could be wrong about that, but the judge said during his sentencing, if the 1512 were not one of his charges, he would have been sentenced that way anyways, and he went up, basically he went upwards on the other charges and left the 1512 alone. So they had started it like two, I think that was two, three months ago. Here, just keep this one. Let's say she's got one. I, want to one. I don't understand why people aren't up in arms every day and in the streets over this mess. It makes me angry. It's, it's, it's insane that, that this can be going on and we still have people that think that it's okay. And, you know, I, I, I read an op-ed today, not an op-ed, but a letter to the editor because it just got the local rag today. And it made my blood boil because they're thinking that they need to find justice for these people and they, they're, they're backing it up without realizing that what they're actually supporting is this injustice. It can happen to them. This is a prepaid call from... An inmate at the Washington, D.C. Central we'll Detention Facility. To accept this call, press 0. To refuse this call, hang up or press 1. I'm taking the 0. Hello, this is a prepaid call from... An inmate at the Washington, D.C. Central Detention Facility. To accept this call, press 0. To refuse your current balance is... $5.31. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and reporting. Thank you for using Global Tell Link. Hello. Hey. Hello. Who's, who we got? Hey, this is David Jefferson. David, good to hear you. How are you doing tonight? Hi, I'm uh, pretty good. Uh, we just got a canteen pretty late today, and uh, you know, I got some of the stuff I was hoping to get, and I've been kind of taking out on it and uh, treating myself. Uh, it's been a while that I haven't had any of the stuff that I ordered, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm doing all right. But uh, uh, how, how are you guys doing up there tonight? Uh, we're doing just fine, we're just doing just fine. We got to be on the first time that we were connected to to the uh, to the the DC vigil. Uh, thanks to uh, to Scott Miller's announcement, that was kind of fun to be there with you all for that. It sounds like you all had a good time. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I I treated them to a uh, uh, how a liberal would feel about a gender reveal party uh, scenario. 
<laughs> That's where my brain went. Pretended to be a, yeah, I pretended to be a college-educated, uh, you know, twenty-something-year-old. Uh, you, know. <laughs> you know, well, how how did that go? What 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 does that look like? Well, I, I had I had to let him know that his patriarchal norms uh, were highly offensive when he uh, decided that he wanted to start assuming genders without giving the baby consent to think its own way. So, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Why is there only one? Yeah, why is there only one color for the for the gender reveal? Why don't we have both? You know, gender perspective, you can just make it up as you go along. I, I thought we just have multiple colored colors for, for, for a rainbow. <laughs> different genders out there. <laughs> I don't think the rainbow is big enough. <laughs> oh, no, no. I don't think, that the, I don't think the color spectrum is big enough at right. this point. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. funny. That's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, Oh yeah, just trying to, you know, have some fun. Uh, that is pretty cool, you know, it's always nice uh, getting the sun, you know, for us men. It's a little different having the sun than a little girl. Uh, I have a little girl myself, but, uh, you know, the, the son, you know, the father-son bond is, uh, is, is different, so he's going to get to enjoy that. You know, I mean, both are awesome in their own ways, but, you know, he's going to get to have some when he gets the hell out of here. So, that was, uh, so, you know, that's always... Uh, a super positive that they can't take from us just because we happen to be where we're at for the moment. Right, they cannot take that from you, not at all. Nope. Wow. Nope. Cool. Well, I'm glad you gave him a hard time about it. That's good because, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's a gift that'll he'll remember for years to come. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The, uh, it's funny that something like that, like, is. There's somebody out there who's definitely believing the whole, you know, like me making fun, like making a, a mock of it, you know, like there's somebody out there who truly believes that information and really thinks like that, which is, I don't know if it's funny or, or scary, but, uh, uh, or sad, you know, but it, it, I think it could be one of, one of any of those things, but, um, yeah, you gotta like, and while you're in places like this, it's always uh, good to keep ahead of both yourself by, you know, trying to find the humor and things, because humor gets you through a lot when it comes to these places, because there's, you know, they're, uh, there's se uh, sensation depriving, they like feeling killers, like it just, uh, it's such a bleak existence when you're in places like this that it's always good to bring, you know, some form of uh, happiness. To, to your situation, it, it, it can make or break your day for a week, uh, for that matter. So it's uh, nice being able to have you know, uh, have fun despite you know the circumstances. Yeah, and I'm so happy that you guys are together. I mean, that is the one blessing. I guess they could have you dispersed throughout that place. So thank goodness that they're that you're all in one spot. Oh yeah, that's uh, it's. Uh, I, I try to tell the guys that. And enjoy the time while you have it because um, you're never going to have this type of camaraderie uh, outside of this, you know, pod. Uh, you know, and anybody who leaves here and doesn't go home but goes to a regular, you know, jail, they're going to experience, you know, the, the reason, that, like, you know, it, it's different. It sucks less because everybody here is the same in a lot of different ways. So, but when you leave that, like I try to explain to some of these guys that it's going to suck where you go. And, you know, it, it's something that, you know, you better take tactical advantage of being here because you're never going to have this ever again while you happen to be uh, in custody. You know, and Northern Neck is a prime example of that. You know, terrible place. From everything I hear about it, it just sounds like a, you know, an awful place. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, unfortunately, if anybody has to be there, they couldn't be here. They could be, you know, surrounded by their, their patriot brothers. But, um, 
things okay. are. Oh, oh. Uh, hey, I guess we're going to start the uh, anthem All right. real quick. Sorry, I didn't mean to rub my uh, finger over this one. But uh, we're going to be starting the anthem momentarily. So you guys will be joining us for that. I think they're uh, connecting, they're getting ready. Right but um, yeah, so, uh, so I'm just going to trial in, uh, in, uh, in New York. What do you guys think about that? <clears throat> I don't know. I I think it's a clown show. It's 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 totally rigged. Um, I think it's pathetic that that there are a significant number of Americans that think he's legit guilty of everything. And um, but I, I I have to point out that he would not be running for president if he didn't think it was worth doing. Yeah, that is true. Hey. By the way, we're going to be, uh, you guys are going to be hanging out for the anthem. Yes, we uh, will. We will be getting this started momentarily. One minute. One minute. One minute. that it doesn't take but a day. Um, but now, we're slowing them down. We're slowing them down. And that's that's kind of the other part. If Trump had been forceful about the election in 2020, um, it would have gone the opposite direction. But by letting it go and letting all this stuff come out the way it has been, that's a nuclear weapon. Everybody's seeing it now. They wouldn't have been able to see it all if he would have if he would have 
um, made a big stink about the election back there in 20. Got to ponder that bit. Well, yeah. Well, I think he plays 5D chess. Yeah, agreed. He does. He plays 5D chess. By the way, you do know one of those dimensions of 5D is time. It's it's crazy. The way he's the way this has been played out is just. Go ahead. No, I was, I, I was going to say I agree with you. With the way that things have gone, just when you think it's like they're getting over the hill for the uh, you know on the on the wrong side, they're getting over the hill on having you know death to the situation, and then he's able to just like say keep going. I don't know. He's very resilient. That man is super resilient because I don't. I can't really think of people. Who would be able to take the, the you know the onslaught of uh, you know issues that you know that they throw at him you know the fabricated stuff to you know the over exaggerated to the you know uh, to the you know solicit lies and everything and just how they work 24 seven round the clock but he man it's like water off a duck's back he just he just seems impervious to it yeah you know it's crazy watching him. Huh? You know, um, most of us, like you were saying, would need some form of extreme support in order to survive it. Makes you almost wonder what kind of support does he have? Yeah, because he, it, it, it's crazy because, like I was going to say, one of the reasons that it's so noticeable is because if you watch him in 2016, and then you look 2015, 2016, and then you watch him at a rally today, it, he, he looks and sounds exactly the same. Yep. Like nothing has, nothing has, has changed. Yep. You know, like mental clarity, you know, like everything is still laser focused, gets the crowd pumped, you know, and, and speaks to the issues. That everybody knows is a real issue, not a not a, a once over or something that's been you know made up by the government. These are actual issues that resonate with you know the people at large, and it, it's just uh, like you said. I think he has better assistance than uh, uh, than a lot of us. You have one minute remaining. I, I think I think there's stuff going on behind the scenes that that we can't see day to day, that but we see the effects of it. So that's how we know it's going on. We see the effects. And yeah, and go ahead, go ahead. He believes that there's going to be a country that can recover from this. Otherwise, he wouldn't be running for president. Yeah. I think he can do it. He did it before. I one hundred percent believe he can do it again. Yeah. Well, hey, you guys have a wonderful night out there. Thank you for letting me uh, talk for this time, and you guys be safe and take care. Thank you, David. God bless you. Have a good one. All right. Likewise. All right. Remember to go vote for Trump. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you guys have a good night. God bless. God bless you. Bye bye now. Thank you for using. All right. Was that Geetson? No. no. What was the last name? Dempsey. 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 Yeah, I haven't talked to him for a long time. David Dempsey. All right. Usually he's not that calm. David is a comedian, Ava. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> There's a bunch of comedians in there. Thank goodness for that, too. Hey, bless you all for tuning in. Please share this as far as wide as you can. Get, get more people involved and educated on J6. And thank you so much for your patriotism and being here with us. God bless you. Good night. Oh, come on. There it goes.